relatively thin margin of 30,000. It's less than a percent, and I don't know the exact cutoff point for when you would need to do a recount, you know, like a required recount. But yeah, currently, you know, what with less than a point difference here, it's leaning Republican. So that would mean that the final tally would be something along the lines of 53 for the GOP, uh, 46 for the Dems, and then two independents. Bernie Sanders obviously leans Democrat in terms of his voting. So that would be, yeah, it's like, I'm not exactly sure about who is it, Angus King Jr. Clearly, the only other person he was running against was a Republican, so I tend to think that that seat is, you know, those constituents are probably more on the line of Republican. If they didn't even bother fielding a Democrat candidate, that'd be my guess. So he might lean a little bit more towards the GOP, but I could be wrong on that. I could easily be wrong on that. I don't, I'm not following that one super, super closely. Let's see the other people that are up here. Rick Scott won by five points in Florida. Pretty commanding. Angela also Brooks only 52%. I mean, they've called it. They have called it, but 79% reporting. She's only got 52% of the vote. Uh, I remember this being a battleground state. And the reason why this was such a close race in Maryland is because the the other candidate was uh, Larry Hogan, who was the governor for like eight years, I think, and was relatively popular. So I know that was a much more competitive race than they were thinking it was going to be. In Michigan, Alyssa Slotkin has won with not a majority, 48.6%, so a plurality of the vote, but not really, you know, not a commanding lead by any stretch. Tim Sheehy in Montana. Montana, for a Republican, is pretty much a lock. Deb Fisher for Nebraska with 53.9%, 98% reporting. Bernie Moreno for Ohio. Ted Cruz for Texas. I don't think that was ever in question, really. And then Tammy Baldwin for Wisconsin. Again, still less than 50%. So, I mean, the only person who's got more than... 50% here, and Democrat is Angela also Brooks, and that's still with 80%, you know, not even 80% reporting. So that, that share could go down. So yeah, kind of a, you know, rough night for the Democrats. Although let's check, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six. So, I mean, you know, six to five. That's a pretty even split, but yeah, I mean, in terms of the, the numbers here, it does seem much more like a much heavier Republican victory than a, than a Democrat retain. All right, the House results. This is where the actual battle is, I think, still being fought because there's still a number of seats up. The question is whether or not the Republicans are going to control the House or not. It's obviously leaning, as you can see right now. GOP, number 206. Democrats, number 191. And the Republicans are heavily favored to gain control of the House. By how much is the question. If we look on the betting odds, it's, I want to say, like 99%, 99% odds that the Republicans have House control. The question is by how much, so let's look into that. Okay, so they've got a 
let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 seats still up for grabs. And the majority of those are leaning. I mean, look at these. These are for Pennsylvania. 99%, 99%, 99% reporting. They're all over 50%. So it seems highly unlikely that, you know, these are not going to be pickups for the Republicans. So that seems almost 100%. They are going to get them. Washington, Marie Glusenkamp, or Glusenkamp, uh, 82% reporting, 51.8% share of the vote. Probably going to be going Democrat, would seem. Uh, Janelle.
House of Representatives. It's not a commanding lead, but it's pretty good. It does mean that, you know, you've got it. You've got a tie-breaking stuff. Uh, the Senate, though, the, you know, the lead there is pretty significant. And the ramifications are that would be, you know, you're kind of filibuster-proof. You can, you know, so if the Republicans wanted to pass a bunch of stuff in the Senate and the House, they would be able to get it through really quickly, and there would be very little that the Democrats could do to procedurally delay any of these bills being passed. So again, I mean, obviously I'm waxing on about something that, you know, if you have even turned the news on, I'm sure you've heard a hundred thousand times, which is, yeah, it was an absolute shellacking for the Dems. They got beaten up pretty badly, and essentially that means that, you know, every institution of power will be controlled by the Republicans for the next two years, because obviously we've got elections again every, you know, two years, and we'll see if they retain that lead in two years. A lot of that's going to depend on, you know, the actual policies that are proposed, passed, ratified, and enforced by the Donald Trump-led Republican Party. Obviously, again, I think I've said this before, I'm optimistic about Trump and his party, if for nothing else, then it does seem like a shakeup. Again, I'm not a Republican. I'm a Libertarian, and I like the idea of a kind of revolutionary attitude in examining our institutions, in examining how our bureaucracy functions or doesn't function and having a really significant mandate such as this does, I think, free up a lot of politicians' heads for being able to, you know, make what would otherwise be unpopular decisions that might get them unelected. I think they've got a lot of cover because of this, you know, very popular mandate by the people. So, hopefully, they do make the cuts to the corruption, or at the very least, just, you know, the bureaucratic overgrowth that is strangling a lot of people in issues. I would love to see that. I think he's got people that, you know, could conceivably do the job. Obviously, a lot of those people in those positions, look, nobody wants to get fired. So, if they have the capability of making sure that they don't, or, you know, delaying that somehow, they're going to try. They're going to do it. They're, you know, that's just human nature. They're going to attempt to cover their butts and save themselves, even if it's, you know, what's better for society or the country as a whole. They're going to try to hold on to power, their positions, their livelihoods. I can't fault them for that, I understand, but if it comes down to, you know, you or everybody else, I'm sorry, but, you know, you gotta go. You'll land on your feet. You'll figure it out. Don't worry about it. You've got value outside of the government, I'm sure. Alright, so with that, I think this channel is going to likely be focusing a bit more as 
Thank you for your time and attention.